Hey Steve here and thanks for tuning into this video. So this is the first in what I'm hoping is going to be a long series of, uh, of videos where I'm going to be processing your images. So um, yeah, just a little bit of backstory into that. So I uh, have been doing this for a little while now with my Photo Mastery Club members and yeah, it's proven to be like a really useful thing for them. Uh, I've been doing it via private coaching and also just recently um, in the main members um, in the main members forum so you know people uh, send me an image and I'll process their image for them and then publish that into the uh, members forum for everyone to see uh, so that's proving really popular so far so I wanted to open this up to a wider audience as well um, so you know my uh, my email subscribers and customers who have purchased my one-off courses uh, you know I want to be able to do a similar thing for you guys as well. So the main difference is that you know Photo Mastery Club members will uh, you know are guaranteed that I'll be able to turn their images around and post a video within a week of them submitting it to me. Um, unfortunately, I've uh, you know I, I can't promise that kind of turnaround or time scale, um, or even in fact that I'll you know I can't really guarantee that I'll get to everybody's images who who sends me them um, for non-members. Uh, but I'll do my best and you know I'll probably be publishing one or two of these per week um, into the future so um, yeah if you want to submit your images uh, then I'll put a link below this video uh, where you can do that you can send me your images and tell me what it is you're struggling with on that particular image and I'll um, take it into consideration for one of these episodes so um, yeah thinking of <laughs> come to think of that I really should come up with a creative name for these uh, for these videos something a little bit different um, which I just reminded myself of when I said episodes there so you know this is episode one of a as yet unnamed series um, I hope you enjoy it so what I'm going to be working on today is a set of images that uh, Jeff fear or fire have has sent through uh, he's got these three raw files which are bracketed exposures that he's been having a little bit of trouble blending so I'm just going to open these in Photoshop and the first step of that is uh, for Photoshop to open them in camera raw plugin uh, so what we've got here we've got three exposures uh, we've got what looks to be the medium uh, and or the middle exposure the the highlights exposure so underexposed here so that we capture the highlights and then the shadows exposure which overexposes the highlights uh, so, um, yeah, actually one other thing before we get too far into this, I just want to mention that these videos are going to be a bit more kind of free form. Um, you know, so what I'm looking at now and me running through the process of, uh, of editing these, this image, um, this is the first time I've done it. I've done no rehearsals or anything. And so it'll be a bit of a kind of stream of consciousness, a little bit perhaps less structured than my previous uh, or my regular videos and uh, tutorials where I've kind of planned out exactly what I'm going to say uh, so yeah just keeping that in mind you know there may be a few mistakes and a few little bits where I backtrack um, as we go along so with that disclaimer out of the way <laughs> let's uh, let's crack back on um, so yeah I'm just looking at these three exposures I don't think I need to do anything in terms of color I think the white balance works quite nicely there's a nice sort of deep pre sunrise glow to the image um, one area that Jeff specifically said he was struggling with was the uh, kind of the way the, the bright lights um, on the horizon just below, behind these hills, uh, the way that that kind of blended in with uh, the, the darker hills there in the background. Uh, so yeah, that'll be a particular area of focus. Um, but other things that I want to look at before we open these into Photoshop, uh, I want to decide which is going to be my base, um, my base exposure. So I think I like the brighter exposure more because it's got that little bit of a longer um, shutter speed on the water, so that's making it a lot smoother than the other exposures. So I think what I'll try to do here um, is just adjust the whites and the highlights just in camera raw before we bring this in to Photoshop just so that we can bring that color back into the uh, into the water here and then we can use this we don't have to try and blend the darker exposure 
um, into the water uh, because then it's not going to match up because the water looks different because of the different flow uh, so yeah probably that would be enough there I don't want to go too uh, you know I don't want to drag these all the way to the bottom because it'll end up looking a bit weird um, so with that done I think you know this this water is going to be the uh, the main exposure and the the building here as well actually uh, that's probably a good exposure to use for this and then we'll just borrow um, parts from the darker exposures just to bring the sky back so yeah the foreground and water is pretty much um, you know pretty good in this in this bright exposure even though it's intended to be the bright exposure and not the middle one um, anyway so let's now bring these all into Photoshop so I'm just going to highlight all of them click open images and hopefully okay it didn't take too long all right let's just copy these into one document now so now let's take this one so command a control c control v so we've got that in the first image now so I can close the middle one and now into this darker document control a select all control c to copy back over into the first image and then control v to paste or command v and let's close that one so now we've got all three exposures each one um, as a layer in its own uh, each each exposure in its own layer in the one document so let's just swap the background around with um, with the one that was the background so yeah uh, we're starting from this bright exposure we're going to start blending in parts from this darker exposure so the slightly darker exposure uh, I think to do that just looking at this we'll try just to bring in the sky we won't touch much of the uh, foreground and, and the buildings there so first things first let's add a layer mask um, add a black layer mask so I'm just going to hold alt or option on the keyboard and click on add layer mask and that's going to add the black layer mask there so we've hidden this layer and I'm going to use luminosity masks here uh, so you know I think that's probably quite a key technique um, for this particular task uh, and I'm also going to use my new uh, luminosity masking panel for this because it does make things so much quicker um, you know whereas if you know if I was to show you each step by step um, you know, each step by step technique uh, the long way around then it would probably end up being a video over an hour long and could could well be um, you know a big chunk of a, of a full course uh, if I was to do that but so yeah I'll use the panel just for the sake of speeding things up um, and you know just keep in mind that you can do anything that I'm doing here in Photoshop without the panel uh, you just have to do it the manual way uh, so let's just zoom out a bit uh, actually I'll forget that I'll go back in uh, so that we've got the image nice and big on the screen now what we need to do is create a selection that isolates the sky so let's turn my uh, preview button on in the luminosity selection section and let's just hit one on the highlights there to see what kind of isolation we get between the sky and the uh, buildings probably not as much as I want so you know we want the buildings here to be a bit darker so let's go number two uh, that looks a bit better so I think we can use this as a good starting point uh, maybe we can just tweak it a little bit before we do so let's open a uh, levels adjustment with the levels button there in the panel let's just make those whites a bit brighter by pulling the uh, the the white point slider here in the in the levels adjustment and yeah that'll probably do so I'll click OK I'll click use mask and I'm just going to press command H or control H that would be on a PC just to hide these marching ants the selection is still active um, I'll just close the panel out of the way there so I'm going to click uh, press on the keyboard B to activate the brush tool going to use the right square bracket to increase the brush size we've got a white foreground color selected and I'll just 
use uh, an opacity of around about 30 percent let's just see what happens when we start brushing this in around the uh, the brightest parts of the sky okay so that's bringing through this middle exposure just in that area there so that looks um, yeah, it's done a really good job already I think I'm pretty happy with that uh, so let's have a look at the mask so if we open the panel we've got this uh, show we can either show layer or show mask so if we're um, on this particular layer we can click that button there and it will show us what that mask is uh, is isolating so here we can see all of the bits in this mask view that are white are the parts of this layer that are showing through so basically being blended into that background layer so here we go there's the before and after now we could um, let's just view that mask again we could be a bit more um, pedantic here with the lights in the building uh, you know we could kind of draw with the pen tool maybe or even let's have a look at the quick selection tool let's see if we can just block this out um, hang on command D to deselect the active selection and let's see what happens if we just create a selection here around this building now let me grab a black brush Um, and let's just see if I can brush those lights out and what this is going to do is um, make those lights brighter as they are in the original background layer so let's deselect that now let's have a look back at this layer there we see that's a pretty effective blend and I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so I think next, let's just see how much of this darkest layer we need to use. Yeah, so there is quite a bit of detail here in the uh, in the cloud that we're still missing out on. So I think we'll just do a similar thing as what we did just now uh, by blending in the sky again from this dark layer. But before I do that, I'm just gonna darken the image a bit because if I try to bring too much of this dark sky through against such a bright foreground then it's going to look a bit unbalanced so let's darken the foreground there so we can uh, we can recover some of these lost shadows in a minute if we uh, if we need to so they're just darkening and so with that done let's add black layer mask to this top layer now and let's again activate a selection so let's have a look this time probably do the same thing as what we did before um, okay let's use number one this time and let's open the levels adjustment and just adjust these points here so that we create that stronger isolation between the shadows and the highlights All right click use mask with the white brush selected a bit bigger again this time command H now let's brush this through here into the sky so this time I'll go all the way across the top of the sky here as well because the the rest of the sky is going to want to be a little bit darker So the, uh, the benefit of having that luminosity selection active while I do this is that I can brush um, over the edges here and uh, you know it's not affecting the, uh, the buildings as much as if I was just going to use a brush without the mask, uh, without the selection. So let's just see now. It's done a pretty good job. And we can see now that there's no... Uh, there's no overexposed highlights here. There's some quite bright highlights, but they still they're not that pure white that we've got on this previous layer So that's a good thing now again. The only issue At this stage is that now the water is a bit too bright uh, Compared to the sky so it wouldn't make sense that this is this bright 
So we've got a choice. We can either brighten the sky up now that it's blended uh, in and we have this base exposure to work with as if it was one uh, exposure. Or we can uh, continue working on um, darkening the foreground. I think... Uh, what way shall I go here? All right, let's get rid of this curves adjustment that I added to darken the foreground and hide this top layer again. And I'll just use a multiply darken layer using the panel here. And I'll just move that underneath here again. Um, and so really we only want this to be in the water because uh, yeah, that's the bit, that's the main part that looks overexposed at the moment. So I'll invert the mask, so Command I, and let's activate this top layer again. And actually, we need the multiply layer on top uh, after all. So with that done, let's just brush this in. So I haven't got any selections active at the moment. I'm just going to brush this into the water just to darken it, just pretty much freehand. And yeah, that's getting there. I think the sky is still a little bit too dark on balance. So maybe we can brighten it again a little bit at this stage, or we can darken the water further. Um, I think darkening the water is probably going to be easier. So let's try the opacity here. So when, when I added this multiply layer, from the panel it comes with an opacity of 50% so we can move this up or down as we uh, see fit I thought I would try just moving the opacity up to um, to increase the effect but that doesn't seem to look as good as I want it to so let's forget that okay we're only a little bit off I think so what I'll just do now let's Add a curves adjustment and brighten the sky. See if see if this uh, looks any better. So the reason for bringing in that darker part of the sky and then brightening it now is that I'm able to brighten it now that the detail is there. So I'm brightening the detail that we blended in from the darker exposure. Um, so yeah, it might seem a bit counterintuitive bringing in a darker part of the photo and then brightening it again. But yeah, that's why. So that we've actually got the detail there to brighten. All right, so I'll invert this curves adjustment now. And again, let's grab a luminosity mask. So I can actually borrow um, the selection or the mask that I've already used or that I've already created on another layer. So if we go back to this layer two, if we show this um, mask here, what we can actually do is just copy this directly into the new curves adjustment that I created. So if I click copy, click on the curves adjustment, and click paste, then we have that uh, same mask being applied in the new curves adjustment. This time, the curves adjustment is being used to brighten the sky. So that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can just tweak that a little bit more. Now we've got the mask in place. And I think that's pretty pretty even. So I like where we're going so far with this and I'm just going to hit pause so I can take a sip of my coffee. So back in a moment. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're back. I ended up drinking the whole thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, here we go. So we've got the blend now. So I'm pretty happy with where this image is at. And if we zoom in, to the uh, to the far edge over here where the biggest amount of contrast is I think um, yeah I think Jeff's initial problem um, or issue that he was experiencing has uh, well it doesn't seem to be happening here he mentioned getting big artifacts around where this uh, transition between dark and bright is now um, yeah so I think just by blending them in, uh, blending these layers in this way has kind of resolved that issue. 
when I zoom into 200% here, I do realize that I've uh, got some uh, chromatic aberration around the edges of the, um, yeah, where we've got this high contrast. And so that means basically that I forgot to uh, check the remove chromatic aberration box in camera raw before I did this. So, um, or, you know, before I opened them into Photoshop. So that would be something that is in my workflow. I just uh, kind of, for some reason, hurried through at the start of the video and skipped over that bit. Um, so yeah, we just got these little green and purple edges around the uh, around these areas over here. <clears throat> over here. So uh, yeah, that's just something I noticed now. Not really a massive issue. We can probably fix it uh, after the fact anyway if we wanted to. Uh, but yeah, so I think from this point, uh, the color still looks pretty good. So we won't, won't need to really mess too much with the color balance, which would be the next step in my six step workflow. Uh, step one being importing from camera raw. Uh, step two being blending the exposures to get an even exposure, which is where we are now. Step three would be uh, you know, make any color corrections and adjustments that we need to do. Uh, don't need that. So step four, let's uh, start looking at some uh, contrast and you know making the image really pop. Now, the first thing that I want to do, because um, we do have some really dark shadows over here, uh, is just to try and get as much detail out of those as possible without making it look too bright and weirdly HDR. So I'm just going to see if any of these layers that I've created here have contributed to that overly dark shadowy area. Um, I can see this one has because this was just the freehand darkening to uh, you know, to darken the water. I have gone over the edge here, so let's see if I can just fix that up a little bit. So I'll switch to a black brush. I won't use luminosity for this because I think freehand is how uh, <laughs> how this effect came to be. So let's use this uh, same technique against itself to fix it up. Um, yeah, and we haven't really got any critical edges here where it has to be kind of perfect transition between the dark and the bright adjustment. Um, you know what, maybe just with a lower opacity brush, I will just undarken this dark side here. So just here where these shadows from the buildings are in the water, I think we can just recover those a little bit. So maybe just up here as well. All right, so I'm happy with that now. Uh, let's see what we can do to bring some detail out of here. Uh, let's click on the top layer so that the next layer I add is going to go on top. And uh, let's see what happens when we just move these up and down. So yeah, I think that building, this building here is really starting to pop just by brightening it. Um, so just keeping an eye here, these uh, this part here is starting to overexpose, so I'm just holding Alt or Option on the keyboard while I move this slider up and down, and we can see, um, you know, this is basically giving us over uh, you know, highlight warnings, so it's telling us what we're overexposing and what parts of the histogram we're clipping when we do this. Um, so I'm only looking at this building over here, really, so I don't care that it's overexposing the sky at the moment. Uh, I think that looks pretty good there. Now I will just take that brush tool and brush it out from here so it's not overexposing that section. And now actually I've done that the wrong way around. <laughs> Let me undo that. Now let's invert the mask. So we're going to hide this effect. And now we need to actually use the luminosity mask to bring that effect through to brighten this building. So again, let's use the panel for this, turn the previews on, and we want to get an, uh, want to get a selection that isolates the shadows. So this time we'll go towards the left of center on this bar across the middle, get something that really isolates quite well. I think this one will do, number three. So let's click uh, Use Mask, Command-H, and now with a white brush, we can just brush this, probably go a bit heavier on the opacity now. We can bring this through here and just brighten this building up. Uh, 
and then I'll invert to a uh, black foreground color in the brush and just remove that from this bit here which risk uh, which is at risk of overexposing so let's look at that now that's pretty good maybe we can go a bit further now that we've got that mask in place so just opening the levels adjustment and tweaking that a little bit more so that's pretty good actually it's on second thoughts it might be a bit too bright let's uh, just move that midpoint there to darken it a little bit and that will add a bit of contrast as well okay I think that looks good uh, let's just tidy up the mask I think uh, let's show this mask here so okay now I was worried that it had gone over the edges into the sky but it doesn't appear to be the case um, we have <clears throat> we have uh, gone over into these other buildings but I think that's alright as well maybe I'll just remove it from here just with that smaller brush don't really want to brighten this up it's already kind of very mid-tony okay Right, that's pretty good so let's deselect the active selection zoom out just to see where we are um, okay now just to do one final adjustment here to see if we can you know, really pull those darker shadows out I'll just add another levels adjustment and go this way on the uh, midpoint maybe bring that black point handle up a couple of notches so just from 0 to 4 there and so that again brightens those shadows but does retain the contrast in the shadows um, okay I like that let's uh, let's just borrow the mask from the previous adjustment again so let's uh, copy this mask and paste it up here into our levels adjustment so again that's pretty good there so let's see the effect of these two adjustments together so quite dark and underexposed in those darkest recesses of in between the uh, bits and pieces on the building and now nice and bright full of contrast and to me I think that really pops so next so we'll do this in three sections so first this building here which I think we're in a pretty good place the next section would be this middle building and then the second and then the third will be over here the sky and the distant mountains or hills depending on where you're from I think in Australia they would be considered mountains we don't have too many that are that high um, uh, but yeah anyway let's um, yeah let's move on so let's look at this middle building uh, I'll add a contrast uh, a levels adjustment again to put a bit of contrast into this middle thing so or this middle building so I'm just going to pull the uh, midpoint slider to the right pull this white point slider to the left just making sure I'm not overexposing anything and maybe I'll just bring the shadows in a bit as well so again ignoring the effect this is having on the entire image and just looking at what it's doing in the middle here I think that probably looks about as good as it can be let's uh, so let's invert this mask and we need to brush this in again and I think again because this building on its own is quite a uniform shape we can just use a quick selection tool to create our mask we don't need to worry too much about necessarily a luminosity selection so let's do this okay that's good and with a brush tool I'm just gonna paint with a white brush in between here to bring this levels adjustment through and we see that building having a bit more contrast and a bit more uh, yeah it brings it a bit more alive So that's good now let's have a look and see what happens when 
we play with the levels adjustment for the sky. Might need to zoom out for this. Okay, so let's move this midpoint slider to the right and the white point slider to the left. So being careful, or just being aware at least, that these highlights are going to overexpose. Um, I think this looks pretty good. Actually, it's not having a bad effect on the entire image. So what I might do is keep this and then just mask it from those bits that have overexposed. So um, yeah, let's open up the panel, turn the previews on, and let's so let's try and highlight or try and isolate those highlights. So let's go right towards the uh, highlight end and pick number five. That looks to do the trick perfectly. So let's use this mask, Command H to hide the marching ants. Get a black brush, and we can just yeah stick on a high opacity there. And let's just brush this in through here just to cover up this effect from the highlights or from at least those overexposed highlights. Okay, now let's have a look at the mask just to confirm what we've done. Okay, that's probably it's probably uh, <laughs> masked out a bit more than I wanted to, but it's better to do this gradually. I guess we can kind of duplicate this effect in just a second to make it stronger again. Uh, let's see what happens if I just literally copy that layer. Mm. Okay, that's not great. I'll delete that. Okay, I think I want this effect to stay in the clouds, um, just not in that brightest part. So let's have a look at this mask. And uh, let's open the levels adjustment and see what happens if I can just make these blacks more of a grey. Okay, I think that does it. Show layer. So this is with the mask off or deactivated. This is with the mask applied, so just recovering those brightest overexposed highlights. So I think the image is looking pretty good as it is. Um, I am noticing a bit of vignetting in the top corners again. I think because I didn't uh, didn't do the uh, stage one of the workflow fully. Um, I would have was it lens distortion or barrel distortion. Uh, I would have checked that box and that would have uh, fixed these vignetted edges. But yeah, just a note that. <laughs> If you do this, uh, always have a preset. Well, actually, have a preset if you use Lightroom. Um, or if you use Camera Raw without Lightroom, then just have to remember to do it each time. Um, yeah, we're in a pretty good place, I think. Uh, so, you know, in terms of contrast, and, you know, as far as the image popping, I think this is uh, a pretty, pretty good effort. Now, yeah, so the next stage of the workflow would be just to sort of enhance and embellish. I don't think this image really calls for any dodging and burning uh, because we've got some really good contrast. I mean, this building just lends itself to these contrast adjustments. They work really well um, here. And I'm not going to dodge and burn anything in the sky because I don't want the clouds to look too kind of overdone and overcooked. Uh, but what I will do is just try something I always like to just bung on the end of my workflow uh, just to see what happens and that is an autumn effect so let's uh, open the panel we've got a shortcut for this just hit the autumn button and that adds a bit of glow and with the panel if there's no selection active at the time you hit that button the autumn button then it creates the effect with a black layer mask applied or if you've got a mask or a selection active, I should say, you've got a selection active and then hit that button, it will apply the effect with that selection applied in the mask itself. So um, let me just show you as an example. If I only want the auto effect to affect the highlights, which I think is probably a good idea here because the shadows are gonna to go too dark if I do anything else. Uh, so 
let's say we only want it to affect the highlights so we'll say use mask and now click Orton then that selection gets applied into the mask of the Orton effect layer so now we can see this if I disable the mask this is what we have if the Orton effect layer is just at full strength but now this is what we have when it's applied only in the highlights and comparing that to if I disable the layer completely this is the image without the Orton effect applied so basically it's just adding a bit of contrast and a bit of uh, glow to the uh, to the highlights and some of the midtones. I think I quite like it just as it is here with this uh, with this basic mask applied. So yeah, we'll keep that. And yeah, just one other thing that I wanted to also just add on to the end. I don't know if this is going to work out perfectly for this particular image, but something again that I like to try is when uh, when you have a shot that is uh, that that has got like the sun in it. I mean, this sun, this image hasn't got the sun in it, but uh, you know, the sun is just behind these hills and mountains over in the distance. Um, but you know, essentially, we've got the effects of the sun being in the frame because we've got this really bright section here. Uh, what I like to do is to try um, enhancing that hazy light effect that uh, would happen if the sun was in the frame. Uh, to do that, let's just add an empty layer and let's just pick a sort of a light color actually what we can do is sample a light color from over here so like a light yellow and probably on about 30 percent opacity we can just add a dab of light there with the brush and so you can play around with the color that gets sampled to see the effect that that has um, yeah, but for me, I, <laughs> it's surprising how effective just literally doing a dab of a brush uh, just with the basic color can actually just add a really nice hazy effect. So, you know, you can do all sorts of things with this afterwards. You can either change it to overlay blend mode to kind of blend it in a bit more, um, or soft light works nicely as well sometimes, or you can just leave it on normal and accept that. It's going to be a really strong hazy effect and then just reduce the opacity of this layer. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think in this case we can probably leave it on about 50% there. I don't think it's too bad. Uh, but again, this is like a personal taste thing. So you can take it or leave it. Um, yeah, and now I think this is probably, where are we? How long have I been recording? 38 minutes. <laughs> Didn't expect it to be this long. Um, yeah, probably with practice or over time, these videos won't quite be so long. Uh, and also, <laughs> this is a great uh, example of why I'm not gonna be able to get to everybody's uh, images who, um, who submits them. But you know, what I'll do is pick the ones that I think can help the most people um, first and then you know I'll gradually sort of work through the images that people submit and you know like I said just working on the ones that I think are going to have the most benefit first uh, for everybody um, but you know it doesn't necessarily have to be landscapes or seascapes or sunrise and sunset and that kind of image um, you know anything that could potentially help people uh, that's going to be like a common thing that I think people might be struggling with uh, you know it doesn't hurt to just send your images in to me and I'll have a look and uh, yeah, hopefully be able to create an episode uh, using your images. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this first inaugural episode of the, un uh, the as yet unnamed uh, feature. Uh, for now, I think I'll probably uh, sign off and let you go and get on with the rest of your day. Now, if you're watching this before uh, December 25th, 2018, then the Luminosity Masking Panel is currently on pre-order. Uh, you can pre-order it now and uh, get a discount off of the launch price uh, but that's only for the next couple of weeks so what am I recording this on December the 6th so you've got a couple of weeks maybe two and a bit weeks to get your pre-orders in and then they'll uh, the panel will be delivered on the 25th and at which point the price goes 
up to the launch price of $97. Uh, you get a discount off of that for the pre-order period. Um, either way, if you're watching this after then, uh, there'll be a button below this video, whatever page you're viewing it on, uh, where you can go and uh, yeah, go and purchase the panel if you want to use that. And uh, yeah, or alternatively, you can just go to luminositymaskingpanel.com, uh, which is going to be where you can purchase the panel from um, after the uh, after the launch date. So yeah, again, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. And yeah, if you want to see me create a video from your images, there'll also be a button below this video that will uh, allow you to send them to me. I'll be able to hopefully continue creating some really useful videos for you. So with that said, thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon.